On October 29th, 2018, tragedy struck as Lion Air Flight JT-610, a brand new Boeing 737 MAX 8, plunged into the sea just minutes after taking off from Jakarta. What seemed like an ordinary flight turned into one of aviation's most shocking disasters, claiming 189 lives. But what caused this sudden catastrophe? Was it human error or was something far more sinister at play? In this documentary, we'll uncover the hidden truths behind the crash, explore the technology that failed, and reveal the ripple effect this incident had on the entire aviation industry. Join us as we dive deep into the mystery of the Lion Air JT-610 tragedy. On the morning of October 29, 2018, Lion Air Flight JT-610 was preparing for its routine flight from Sukarno Hatta International Airport in Jakarta to Depati Amir Airport in Pangkal Pinang. The aircraft of Boeing 737 MAX 8 had completed a pre-flight inspection and its crew was briefed and ready for takeoff. Lion Air is one of Indonesia's largest low-cost carriers founded in 1999 and has grown rapidly to become a major player in Southeast Asia's aviation industry. Known for its expansive domestic network and affordable fares, the airline has faced both rapid expansion and criticism for its safety record, particularly following the tragic crash of Flight JT-610 in 2018. Sukarno Hatta International Airport, located in Jakarta, Indonesia, is the busiest and largest airport in the country serving as a major hub for both domestic and international flights. Named after Indonesia's first president and vice president, it handles millions of passengers each year and plays a crucial role in connecting Southeast Asia to the rest of the world. Lion Air Flight JT-610 had departed from Sukarno Hatta International Airport in Jakarta at 6.20 a.m. local time, with its flight path set toward Depati Amir Airport in Pangkal Pinang, Located about 130 kilometers, 81 miles away, the flight was expected to take around 40 minutes. The aircraft involved in the incident was a Boeing 737 MAX 8, registered PKLQP with line number 7058 and powered by two CFM International Leap engines delivered new to Lion Air on August 13, 2018, the plane had accumulated approximately 800 hours of flight time prior to the ill-fated flight. The aircraft had recently undergone maintenance, including the replacement of its angle of attack, AOA, sensor. The replacement sensor was supplied by the US-based company, Extra Aerospace. However, the sensor provided was likely miscalibrated when it was shipped by Extra Aerospace. Despite this, Lion Air's maintenance crews did not conduct the necessary tests or verifications to ensure its proper functioning before returning the aircraft to service. This oversight contributed to a critical failure as the miscalibrated sensor ultimately played a significant role in the malfunction of the aircraft systems during the flight. The cockpit crew of the flight consisted of Captain Bobby Sunaja, a 31-year-old Indian national with over seven years of experience at Lion Air. He had accumulated approximately 6,028 hours of flight time, including 5,176 hours on the Boeing 737, and had received his training in California. Alongside him was First Officer Harvino, a 41-year-old Indonesian with a total of 5,174 flight hours. 4,286 of which were on the Boeing 737. The cabin crew included six Indonesian flight attendants. On board the aircraft were 181 passengers, including 38 civil servants. Among them were 20 employees from the Ministry of Finance, 10 from the Audit Board of Indonesia, two auditors from the Finance and Development Inspection Agency, and three employees from the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources. The group also included three Indonesian national police officers, three public prosecutors, six members of the Banka Belitung 
Regional People's Representative Council, and three judges from Indonesia's High Court and National Court. The aircraft took off from Jakarta on October 29, 2018, at 6.20 a.m. local time. October 28, 2018, 11.20 p.m. UTC, and was scheduled to arrive at Dapati Amir Airport in Pangkal Pinang by 7.20 a.m. Right after takeoff and while heading toward the coastline, the pilots noticed something was wrong with the control systems and the aircraft was very difficult to gain altitude. Exactly three minutes after takeoff, the captain contacted ATC requesting to return to Jakarta for an emergency landing. ATC approved the request and the airport immediately prepared to welcome the aircraft back. ATC instructed the aircraft to make a turn to the north in order to return to the airport. However, it remains unclear what caused the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, MCAS, to repeatedly take control of the aircraft, forcing the nose of the plane to pitch down. Normally, the MCAS is activated only when the aircraft's nose is angled too high, which could potentially lead to a stall and compromise flight safety. The aircraft continued to dive and experienced severe turbulence. The pilots struggled to pull back on the control column in an attempt to regain altitude and stabilize the plane. At this point, the aircraft was at an altitude of 5,000 feet, but it was far from stable with erratic fluctuations in altitude. The turbulence became increasingly violent and the pilots were desperately fighting to regain control and preserve their lives. The captain handed over control of the aircraft to the first officer in order to search for documentation that could help resolve the issue. The aircraft was tossed and turned over the Java coastline, caught in a life or death struggle. But it was all too late. Within the cockpit, the voice of the first officer could be heard praying. At 6.33 a.m., the aircraft plunged into the Java Sea at a steep angle, approximately 34 kilometers, 18 nautical miles, 21 miles, off the coast of the island of Java, resulting in the tragic death of all passengers and crew members on board. The investigation, led by the National Transportation Safety Committee, NTSC, revealed that a new software feature in the flight control system, the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, MCRS, caused the aircraft to pitch downward. Boeing had intentionally omitted information about MCAS from the aircraft's documentation, leaving the Lion Air pilots unaware of its existence and functionality. Investigators found that the angle of attack AOA sensor, an external device on the aircraft, was miscalibrated due to improper maintenance, sending incorrect data to the MTS. This caused the MTS to push the aircraft's nose down. The same issue had occurred on the preceding flight, but the pilots were able to regain control using a standard checklist for a runaway stabilizer situation. On the accident flight, the AOA sensor again sent faulty data to the MCAS, causing it to repeatedly push the nose down. The pilots failed to properly follow the checklist, allowing MCAS to remain active and continually force the aircraft into an unsafe nose-down position, 
ultimately leading to the crash. Following the Lion Air Flight JT-610 crash, the United States Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, in Boeing issued warnings and training advisories to all operators of the Boeing 737 MAX series, emphasizing the importance of following the runaway stabilizer checklist to prevent MCRS-related issues. Boeing also announced plans for a software update to modify the behavior of MCAS. However, these advisories were not fully implemented, and similar problems led to the crash of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 on March 10, 2019. This prompted a global grounding of all 737 MAX aircraft. On December 31, 2018, the family of the first officer filed a lawsuit against Boeing, alleging negligence. The lawsuit claimed that the aircraft's sensors provided inaccurate flight data, causing the anti-stall system to improperly engage, and that Boeing failed to provide adequate instructions to pilots on how to handle the situation. In March 2019, families of the victims reported that Lion Air pressured them into signing away their rights to pursue legal action in exchange for undercompensated settlements. In October 2019, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, FIA, revoked the Aviation Repair Station Certificate of Extra Aerospace, the company that supplied the faulty AOA sensor to Lion Air, effectively putting the company out of business. In December 2020, a federal judge in Chicago froze the assets of attorney Thomas Girardi, ruling that he had misappropriated at least two million U.S. dollars in client funds meant for the families of those killed in the crash. He was disbarred and ordered to return 2.3 million U.S. dollars in funds. In memory of those we've lost, may their stories live on in our hearts forever.